All right. Gabriel says, I have a strange question. I went to a workshop to collect the trumpet after ultrasound cleaning. And there was a man who is a good jazz player known in the city who collected his trumpet. The, the boy gave me my trumpet and asked if I wanted to try it. I did a few scales and the jazz man came up to me and said con contemptuously, you sound like someone who plays classical music. <laughs> well, I would say thank you very much. Huh? Does anyone who plays jazz play skills differently from those who play classical? Yes, sir. That's, that's, um, there are stylistic differences. And for someone that doesn't cross the, 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 the divide, they play their skills that way. I have a, a philosophy that if you want to play both styles or more specifically, if you want to play more than one style, then your exercises should be without style. But if you only want to play classical music, then there's no reason why your scales should not be classical. And if you only want to play jazz, there's no reason why your scales should not sound jazzy. So yes, I, I can tell when, when I hear somebody warming up, they might not be playing anything that has any style to it. You know, I mean, in terms, you know, they might not be playing a song, but just by the way they're playing their uh, scales or their articulation studies or whatever they're using for their warm up, long tones even, I can tell if they are classical players or jazz players. And I'm going to be honest with you, as I get older and as the classical scene changes, I fit less and less in the classical world. That's not on me as much as it is on the scene changing so much. How the classical players play today is different than how it was 30, 40 years ago. I don't know if I should be saying this out loud because some people would get upset, but it's the truth. The trumpet community is full of hero worship. And people are blinded by their hero, hero worship. They're blinded so much that they can't hear what's actually happening. Anyway, so we had, we had Bud Herseth, who used to be, uh, until he retired, he was regarded as the best orchestral trumpet player in the United States. We had him come down to Houston, gave a master class, and he's working with these. This is after he retired. He's working with these students at Rice. And based on today's standards, the way he played in that master class, I don't think he'd get a job an orchestra job. I don't think he would, would have won an orchestra audition based on how he was playing, not because it wasn't good enough, but because the scene has changed so much. And it's hard for trumpet players to accept that kind of talk because, oh, you can't say anything negative about these heroes. And in fact, I'm not actually saying anything negative about him. What I'm saying negative is about... Um, the, the, the society that we have now, the trumpet society, the, the orchestral world society. Um, but here's the thing. In that master class, this is what I took away from that master class. The students that played in the master class had this angelic sound. It was a, a, a gorgeous angelic sound. But what he pointed out in the master class was all true. It was compared, when you listen to him play the piece and then you listen to them play the piece, what they played was expressionless. There was, compa speaking comparatively, he put his heart and soul into the music. It actually sounded like something. Whereas the students 
didn't have any of that. And I have, I have theories about why. I have a lot of theories about why. But the truth is, he would not have won an audition playing the way he did in that master class. But he was, in my opinion, a hundred thousand times, I'm exaggerating, uh, a thousand times better than they were, which is, that's the part where hopefully everyone could agree with me on. But the way I describe it, the way, I, the, what I took away from it, walking out of there. Um, and this is, you can't really blame the students because the society has changed. If they want to make a living, they can't play like that. They have to be more homogenous with what's going on. You know, many, many years ago, all of the orchestras sounded different and, and someone who had a unique character could find a place to play. That's not true today. Not as true as it was. Anyway, so Gabriel says, how would a, how would a C scale, in, how, how, would, how would you play a C scale in a jazzy way? Okay, it has to do with articulation and it has to do with the pitch. So a jazz player doesn't mind if the pitch moves in, right? If I'm playing from, from C to D, there's almost a portamento between the notes. Even the way I'm articulating that first note. It's like a wah, wah, wah. We can do that in jazz because it's part of our expression. In, in classical music, everything is uniform. We want, the, uh, if we have five notes in a row that are tongued, we want five uniform articulations. We want the articulation on that note to be just like the articulation on that note to be just like the articulation on that note. And we spend our entire careers working to, to shrink that, that um, tolerance. Let's call it a tolerance, right? That's one way to explain this, right? In jazz, the tolerance is like this. In classical, the tolerance is like this. You, the, there is no tolerance for a different sound on one note and a different sound on a no, another note. If you have a, like a, a, a crescendo, there's no tolerance for anything but a, a, the most smooth crescendo you can possibly have. And so when we hear that kind of training, that's a type of willpower. It's a, it's, so the, the, the jazz players don't exercise that kind of willpower. They have on the other side these other things that they put effort into. They don't put in effort into this uniformity over here. So when you hear someone that plays with a, a, that kind of elevated uniformity, it shines of, of classical training. You almost can't miss it, right? It sounds like classical playing. The jazz guys don't have that uniformity because it's not as desirable. Now, I, in that video I was telling you about um, that I don't know which one it is, I actually point out that it's possible to play jazz with that kind of uniformity of sound, uniformity of attack and stuff like that. It is possible to play that. Um, uh, I've heard some great trumpet players play that way in their in their jazz improvisation. It doesn't, in my opinion, sound very jazzy, but they are doing. They are playing jazz. They are they're playing improvising with a rhythm section and stuff like that. And they're, and they're phenomenal players. It's a little cold. If you ask me, that kind of playing is a little cold. And depending on the player, maybe a lot of cold, right? Maybe a lot of cold.